There we go. You can hear me shuffling around the background. We are in Christmas Beer Advent 2022, day 11. Yesterday we had a hop kick in the face. Uh, it was crystallography from Cloudwater. I would imagine a very polarizing brew, heavy West Coast, double IPA, 8%. Um, yeah, I give it a great score. But wow, did it pack a pop. It was a donkey's kick of uh, hops. But we're going to get into it. Stay 11, another day, another beer. Let's go. Already, let's bring in the beer cam without further hesitation. Do I have a glass? I do. I have my newly cleaned whiskey glass. I like that one. So I'm going to do that again. And beer cam needs to be added. Shablam. Hey there, beer cam. Let's go check it out. I should make the other side. All right, I'm walking away, so I'm going to switch this mic. There we go. Hopefully that works. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. All right, we are. I have it laying prone now because I worked out that I couldn't get the beers out. Otherwise, this is one little criticism to Trembling Madness. Is this box preparation is really rubbish. All righty. We have a Verdant Velvet Overground. Ooh, a little musical reference. <clears throat> All around. Goodbye, beer cam. And hello, velvet over the ground. Check it out, Verdant. We did a Verdant recently. It was really good. Oatmeal stout. Anything special we need to learn about Verdant? So Verdant, if you watched the previous one, seven percent. Hot side hops. Pato. Oh, I love it when I hear. I, I do not know that hop at all. So using a choice of hop in a stout is important because I think it really it it defines it really defines the stout. People think the stouts are all about malt. Maybe not everybody thinks that, but uh, a lot of people do because it's just dark malt. People drink Guinness. They think stout. They go, oh Guinness. Guinness is. A pretty unique blend of like roasted chocolate, uh, barley malt, and um, what hop is in it? No clue. But if you get a really good oatmeal stout and you get the hop just right, so you use maybe some of the hops that we had yesterday in the crystallography, like real punchy, um, really heavy, heavy bitter hops, uh, pretty darn good. I don't know Pato. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take a quick look and see what that is. High off acid, so it's bitter. A uh, little beta acid, so it's going to just be punchy, floral, woody, and such. So let's pop this. Oh, it's actually, I'm just, I'm just looking online here, learning about it. Actually, why I can always, why keep knowledge to myself? What kind of jerk am I to be doing stuff like that? Uh, we can do this and this, and you can learn as I learn. So I don't know this hop. I'm looking at Yakima Valley, Pato, formerly Pato, now HBC 682. That's not a very friendly, friendly name for a hop. Nevertheless. Um, all right, fine. Then we'll leave that behind and we're going to go and pour it out. Now, I don't have control over the temperature of these beers because it's just, it's just too much space to put one of these things in your fridge. So they just sit outside. Right now, outside, it's minus two and foggy, which means it's like a bone-chilling, pain-in-the-backside cold. Uh, but let's take a look. It's a little uh, caramely. It's not, like, pitch black. Take a look at that. Look at the head. That's nice, eh? Mmm, very good. I've heard somebody once say that, oh, you, you can tell it's a porter because the head is brown. Uh, as opposed to a stout where the head is white, which is total BS, really, right? It's not, that's not really, that doesn't really matter. I think it's, I think it's down, it's down to really the type of malts that make that, that, that color. I might be wrong there. I, I know, I know I, I sorted that out 
And sometimes I get a little bit fuzzy in my brain. It looks like Coca-Cola, doesn't it? I'm a little scared of dropping the glass. Let's give it a little taste. We have to assume there's oatmeal in it. Hey, how about that? I don't know why it's called Velvet Overground, though. I don't have any background on it. I don't really know any special malt details, which are usually important for these kind of things. We're just going to have to wing it. This is why we live the lives we live, to take adventure by the horns. It's nice. Wow. So without knowing the malts that are in there, I don't really know what to say about it other than it's obviously got a significant hop in it, which is great. I think people really let their stouts down. Sometimes, not in the UK, actually. If you Sometimes you get some hot, some stouts that are just on pulled pints, and you can tell that they've put a little bit of effort into the to, into me into um knowing that the hops you put in are significant and they're not just placeholder light bitter hops right this is this is pretty punchy i would even say as it fades as the malt flavor fades out of my face that i am getting left with a very similar hop punch that i had on the crystallography like it's just lasting and lasting it's a really long almost tanniny style stout really velvety really soft try one more sip That's pretty unique. It's not like crazy special, but I don't think it's trying to be. It's just trying to be a really good oatmeal stout. Actually, I think it's done a pretty good job of elevating the standard of oatmeal stout. It does have that style of oatmeal-y, you know, which is, which is good. I mean, if you know what oatmeal tastes like, it's not like it's not a big secret. That's what it tastes like. But it's it's just really quite nice. I think also there's a bit of i you going to dive into the hop or the, the way it, it finishes again. The There's, I don't want to say like a rose, but floral. I, I don't like rose. I probably said this a few times in the show before uh, as a flavoring, but I like the bitter that comes from it. So it does have that in a, in a, in, in a reasonable punch, real reasonable abundance. I think they've done an awesome job, but man, for Dan always does. So why am I surprised by that? That's pretty pleasant. So, Really crappy, cold, bitter, awful day. I'm lucky enough on a Sunday to pull myself a verdant velvet overground. Pretty sweet. It is velvety. It's oatmeal-y. It's bitter. It's delicious. A little bit of pininess in there. And a little bit of uh, rosiness. That's going to be really nice. That's going to be... All right. I'm going to... I'm. That's going to be above four as well. Much like yesterday's. And I'm, I'm on a good run. Um, there's going to be two days off, though, if you like watching these things now or in the future. By the way, if you do watch these things in the future and you like what you see, maybe it came up as a, as a search result on YouTube. Occasionally that happens. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. I'm trying to educate people about the world of beer. Hopefully you just learned about Pato, now HBC682 hops, which are delicious, apparently, in an oatmeal stout. Tell your friends. Put it on Facebook. Why not share it on Reddit if you're that kind of thing? Make a TikTok dance about it. Do something like that. And tell everybody so that we can all educate ourselves more about fantastic beer. Super happy with these. I'm going to end it right there. This has been day 11 of the Christmas Beer Advent Keller 2022 on Beer Native. My name is Steve Jaguer. And I will see you in, let's hope, three days. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but the day after. Tomorrow is my knee surgery. Wish me luck in the comments. I will, uh, I will see you then. Steve out.